Last year, my old school, um, now called Codsell High School, decided they wanted to track down their former pupils to form an alumni association. And I was asked to complete an online questionnaire about my career, interests, family, etc. Now, I hated my old school. I don't know any friends there. Teachers that friends, I mean. I was labelled a failure at 11. I, I, I always had a bit of a chip on my shoulder about that. My reports weren't good. Typical comments were, and I actually still got them, and I did actually read them the other day for this, were, has failed to take, make any effort whatsoever in the majority of subjects, and poor, more effort needed. So I left school at 15, never to return. Now, could I be bothered to fill in this questionnaire? Well, I did. And a few weeks ago, I went back to this school that I left for the first time in 45 years. But this time, I went to address the students at their annual awards ceremony and to present the GCSE and A-level certificates. I had certainly exceeded my old headmaster's expectations by being invited back. Now, why do I tell you this story? Well, on le leaving school, I went to a technical college to attempt some O-levels, as they were then called. Um, I immediately settled in and started to work, probably for the first time in my life. I enjoyed my new college, I, and the lecturers treated me um, in a more adult way. Most of my fellow students wanted to work, and I guess I experienced peer pressure for the first time in my life. I got my O-levels eventually. I also failed English seven times. Well, I've got to write it down. And I, eventually, I got an ordinary national diploma in, in building. And I ended up at um, Aston University in Birmingham, as did Terry. I think Terry and I were probably the first students from our respective schools to get to university, which uh, was a bit of a frightening thought. Um, we had a lot in common. We both got to university via technical rather than academic qualifications. But that's where the similarities ended. We came from very different backgrounds. And he supported Burnley and I supported the Wolves. So we had building and football in common, a uh, good enough reason to get together. Uh, and we shared a flat. And uh, Terry um, spent many weekends at, in Wolverhampton, and my mother, Betty, adopted him as her third son. Now, she was a physiotherapist and a justice of the peace. But she had fantastic motivational skills and got to work on Terry. She began to raise his horizons. And that's his words in his book, not mine. She saw something in Terry that he didn't see in himself. A point that I will, uh, will occur later when I'm talking about some of our footballers. Um, she gave him increased confidence and a determination to succeed. I think you would agree with that, Terry. Um, during our, lives to, uh, our years together at university, um, we shared a flat. We shared a flat for three years. And the foundations of that friendship has lasted a lifetime, but not 50 years. Yet. On leaving university, um, we both embarked on a career in the construction industry. Now, I started working on a building site for a, a public company and really enjoyed the work and the people that I worked with, particularly the boss. Uh, his name was Peter Pierce, and he gave me several opportunities in my early career. Now, Peter died a few months ago. Uh, he wasn't very old, and I spoke at his funeral, but I never, ever forgot what he did for me in my early career. He gave me a lift. 
Then in my early 30s, I thought I'd start to work in my own business. I'd actually seen too many people in my 20s and 30s being a bit sidelined early on in their 50s. And I thought, well, I, don't, I want to be a bit more of a master of my own destiny. So I thought, well, I might as well start at 30 rather than leave it until somebody's had enough of me. That was my thought then. The construction industry is a great industry to work in. There's, there are many entry levels and opportunities for career advancement for both men and women. It really is a people business that functions in teams, both within your own organization and external organizations, with the project always being the focus of everyone's efforts. If you're lucky enough in life to lead such a team, at whatever level, you have to love that team. And you must want every member of that team to reach their own goals and aspirations, whatever they might be. Um, to succeed in your chosen career, it helps if you enjoy what you do and have a passion for it. By coincidence, my chairman at Wolves, uh, Steve Morgan, started working at the same time as Terry and I. He's a couple of years younger. Now, Steve, I was reading, he wrote a book, um, and he gave me a copy of it. And I was reading it the other day. And now, Steve entered our industry via a very different route. He, he started work at 18, uh, after completing his old national diploma, as, Her as Terry and I did. But he, he got a place at Aston University, too, but he decided he'd rather go to work on a building site because he couldn't be bothered with all this academic stuff. I think he got it right. Um, in the foreword to this book, he says, and I quote, when I started Red Row in 1974, I had no idea that it would grow into a highly successful public company. All I know for certain was that I had a passion for the construction industry and was determined to make Red Row a success. And this achievement would not have been possible without the work of the extraordinary and dedicated people who together have built Red Row. The main points of that, of course, are that a passion, interest in what you do, the right teams, and leadership. Those qualities come through. Now, Steve had acquired Wolverhampton Wanderers two years ago. He acquired Wolves for £10 subject to investing £30 million in our bank account. Um, I suppose it would be a silly question to ask if there are any Wolves fans in the room. Yeah, I thought so. There's one. Pardon? There is one. Fantastic. I never thought I'd find, find one up here. Great. Well done. Terry could have played for Burnley, but he wasn't good enough. 